So if folks have questions that need clarity as I'm talking, feel free to interrupt me, Steve or Donna, um, with yeah. the question. <clears throat> so that way there isn't any confusion and we can keep the flow going. Otherwise, of course. Yeah. as me and Doc had talked about, you know, doing, if we can do possibly 20 minutes of questioning at the end. Yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll see how we do. And uh, I need to disable the waiting room so we can let everyone in. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we're just letting folks get settled in here. Um, I've disabled the waiting room so uh, participants joining us a little bit later can, can join without issue. Uh, wanna welcome you all. I'm gonna let folks get settled in virtually here. I see there's still a few waiting to get connected uh, to their audio. So let's give them a, a, a fighting chance here to, to join us. Uh, really great to see everyone. I wanna thank you all for taking the time to, to join us this morning. We have got a very, very uh, important uh, webinar and discussion today that we're just so uh, uh, honored to have you all here with us. Um, to have a dialogue and we've got a wonderful presenter and we also have a special guest that uh, we're hoping will join us here uh, momentarily. So um, <clears throat> let's go ahead. It looks like folks are for the most part settled in. Those of you that are still connecting to audio, we'll try and get you caught up here um, as we go. Okay, everybody see, can everybody see that uh, introductory screen well? Just give me a thumbs up. Yes, I got a thumbs up there. That's great. Well, I have a few introductory slides to go through, and then I'm going to transition and pull up the um, PowerPoint that our speaker has prepared for today. Uh, but I have just a few under introductory slides, and um, I know Donna wants to probably say a few words before we get started as well. And uh, just want to welcome you all again to the uh, the, the final uh, webinar in our 10 session series, uh, Walking in Two Worlds, Behavioral Health Challenges, Living Native in a Non-Native World. And today's session um, is titled Human Trafficking and the Murdered and Missing. And we have with us <clears throat> today uh, our presenter, Teresa Subril. She will talk a little bit more about herself and what brings her uh, here today to speak with you all. We also have a guest speaker, uh, Dr. Dan Foster, um, should be joining us here momentarily. Um, and he will also uh, make some comments and be part of the dialogue as well. So we're really feeling um, fortunate to have him uh, have the time to join us. And of course, <clears throat> with us is Donna Enfield, uh, Donna and I have uh, been collaborating with our Native Center for Behavioral Health and the Bemidji IHS group. And Donna, it's been uh, it's been wonderful working with you, and I've really appreciated uh, all of your support and enthusiasm. So, I just want to say thank you, and uh, maybe if you'd like to say a few words as well to the audience, uh, you have the floor. Certainly. Thank you, Steve. And again, I just want to second uh, what a, an honor and a privilege it is to have all of you joining in with us today. Um, this is a such an important topic. It's a very heavy topic. Um, it was very challenging and we discussed um, quite a bit whether or not we should um, do it in a webinar format because it is such a very heavy topic. Uh, but decided it was too important not to. Um, so um, I know that uh, our presenter will be talking about the importance of self-care as we go through this. But again, just want to stress, um, thank you to all of you for joining us today. And a second also, what a privilege it has been also to collaborate with the University of Iowa to put on this webinar series and all our wonderful presenters that we've been able to have through yes. the University of Iowa. So thank you. <clears throat> well, I second your second, if that's possible, uh, Donna. Thank you very much. And I see uh, Dr. Foster has joined us. Uh, Dr. Foster is uh, one of our senior advisory council members and a valued consultant with our center. We're really happy to have you here, Doc. And uh, 
appreciate you joining us today. So thank you. Um, let me run through just a couple of brief introductory slides and then I will turn the floor over. We have, uh, Teresa has put together a lot of information and we uh, were talking earlier before we came on. Uh, I think Donna and I will monitor the chat. We'd like you to remain muted uh, during the presentation. However, uh, utilize the chat or the hand raise feature and we're gonna try and reserve a little time at the end to have um, uh, some discussion. Uh, but, but as Donna mentioned, this, is, um, this can be a very emotional topic. So uh, we, we wanna uh, respect and honor those in attendance and be mindful of that. So um, thank you again for joining us. Um, the Native Center for Behavioral Health is supported by the University of Iowa and the College of Public Health. The content of this event is the creation of the presenters and does not necessarily reflect the views or policies of the Native Center for Behavioral Health or the University of Iowa or the Bemidji IHS. <clears throat> we, we will be um, <clears throat> able to provide links to these slides if you are interested. I know Teresa has put a lot of resources and um, a lot of links to resources in this, this PowerPoint presentation. So we wanna try and make this available to you uh, with her blessing, of course. And, and then we'll, we will also, um, we are recording this event and we will uh, provide a link to our Native Center for Behavioral Health YouTube archive page that has uh, almost all of the recordings that we've done. And this one will make it there within a few days. It takes our comms team a little bit to, to process and edit and get it into the, to the archive. But we'll send a link out so that you can access this or share this with a colleague if they're not able to attend today. And lastly, we uh, will be making available uh, 1.5 CEUs, either uh, NADAC approved or um, University of Iowa Social Work approved uh, CEUs. So you can request this as well in a follow-up email. And I know that we are gathered here virtually today, but we want to take a few moments to acknowledge the land and pay respect to the indigenous nations whose homelands were forcibly taken and inhabited. Please take a moment to read this land acknowledgement, which was created by three members of our team. Thank you. Without further ado, I want to introduce today's speaker, <clears throat> uh, my friend and colleague, uh, uh, Teresa Subril. She has a extensive background uh, culturally and has also worked in a number of different fields, including the criminal justice system uh, and working with uh, a variety of disciplines uh, pertaining to this topic today and other behavioral health uh, specialties. So we are really thrilled to have her. If you've had the chance to see Teresa speak and present on other um, webinars, uh, you know that she has a wonderful way of communicating. So we're just blessed to have her with us here today. And Teresa, thank you so much for the work that you put into today's presentation. I know it's connected uh, deeply to your spirit and I appreciate you taking the time to be here. So uh, with that, I'm gonna turn the floor over to you and uh, give me a few moments. I'll let you introduce yourself better than I just did and um, uh, maybe uh, take a few moments to share with the group and then I will pull up your slides. So you have the floor, Great. thank you. Talk, Steve. So I am Teresa Subro. Um, I'm Anishinaabek and Menominee descent as well. I go Anishinaabek ways. 
Um, I live in northern Wisconsin, and I, since about my late teens, uh, have a various background in the human trafficking and murder and missing, on and off in, in different capacities, been brought in, went in, worked with, um, met with, counseled with, <laughs> listened to the stories, looked for solutions, looked at the needs, looked at where they were failed, um, looked at so many aspects. And so I'd like to bring some of that today. Mostly um, we're gonna be looking at the healing portion of it, life going on and life after, which is hard, but it is the greatest gift and it, it is something that needs to be. Um, I asked Doc Foster to come on and if possible his wife as well. And I know he's busy and in and out with things. So whenever I see he can chime in on something, I am going to stop and just let him speak. Whereas his wife, uh, they both also have so much to bring. And so I'm so thankful that they're able to be here. And off the bat, I really want to thank all of you for being here. Um, it is desperately needed, this help. There are so many who wished, prayed, cried out for somebody who would know how to help them, know how to reach them, their loved one, um, prayed for them, talked to spirit for them. So you're an answer to so many, so many cries. And it is a hard thing to do, um, to hear sometimes for some, and some that they're just built for it. So always self-care. But I think any atrocity or tragedy um, that people go through is hard nonetheless. So I uh, would like to thank the spirits I know that are coming in. I wasn't asked to speak on all of your behalf and out of respect, I wouldn't do that. Um, but for myself, I, I like to thank the spirits that come in and the great ones and the creator of all for the help and the guidance always, whether it's with healing and the wisdom to know what to do, how to be detached at times and at times to be okay with crying in front of them when you hear their story, those showing them those tears because sometimes they're desensitized as powerful or became numb or things became normalized. How to be strong for them how to pull resources and make sure they're right, to give me that energy, to persevere forwards, to keep going for truth that comes out, whether we like it or not, and what to do with it. For all of their guidance, for all of their support, for all of that heart, for all of that spirit and wisdom, and so much more, I want to thank them. And I want to thank the ones that help you as well. In the past, right now, today, and in your futures. I'd like to introduce Doc Foster if he's available to pop on and introduce himself. I'm a Dr. P. Dan Foster, I'm a Thank you, Teresa. Thank you, Steve. Um, thank you, Harry Office, IHS. This is a touchy subject, um, literally. And, and I found in, in our Western societies often, um, I work with people's beliefs, thoughts, words, and actions. And a lot of Western medicine, particularly in mental health, goes from the opposite direction, works with the behaviors, uh, words, thoughts, and beliefs. But I found that things come from beliefs. And, and I, many people, when they come, and we're starting to work with beliefs. They can't even tell me what their beliefs are. They can only tell me what they aren't. And so we have a sense of who we are and who we aren't. But in the area of trafficking, murdered and missing, and particularly in, in the area of sex trafficking, um, that's not something that our society is very good at discussing. That and politics and religion we avoid. And yet we're all sexual beings. We're all spiritual beings. We're all human beings and by virtue of being human i've joked with steve before politics is just uh when you and i aren't friends and an outsider disagrees with us that's politics because human beings work from safety out and so i, I am going to offer a song uh, Teresa. and this song says 
that we're not the center of the universe in our world. In, in, uh, uh, in Western society, human beings are the center of the universe. And what have we done everywhere we've been in, in, this, in the society? We, we reduce human beings to objects and we re reduce our relationships to transactions. What is your value? Your value is not as a human being. Your value is as a human doing. What can you do for me today? It's transactional. We come from a culture that's relational, that's interconnected, interdependent, relational, even in ways you can't see. I've asked people, who's the, what's the most powerful force in this room today? And people come up with different answers. But I'll propose the gravity, the strong and the weak atomic force and, and electricity electromagnetism are, are very, very powerful as we all sit throughout. And I would propose that in the spiritual dimension, love. Love is the gravity of our nagi, of our soul. So I encourage you to listen today. Uh, I don't know about with an open mind, but listen today as one who wishes to learn. And sometimes I call it trauma porn. I've found that, that folks are just fascinated with stories of war and sexual pain. But what we're talking about today is betrayal of trust. And so remember, betrayal of trust in loving ways, and we're taught in our ways to never pray for anything that you're not willing to be an answer. And so as Teresa just mentioned, my prayer is that each of you, each of us participating today, uh, will, will not look away from injustice, from transactional objectification of women, men, elders, children, of others, of ourselves, will speak up, but do so as people who love, who love creator, who love life, who love the earth, who love the water, the flora, the fauna, the birds, the trees, the songbirds are back, how awesome. That fort keeps people out and keeps people in. And so with this song, I'm just gonna sing two push-ups rather than four. But this song is asking for help uh, because we're part of creation. We are not creation. And we're part of creator. We are not creator. And we all turn to the same source uh, to, to help us in our relationship and connection with each other. So, this first image here is of a replica of a soldier fort. It's actually was was located in Nashville, Wisconsin on Lake Superior, but they were all over United States and Canada. And it's just to help you understand, if you don't already know, how far back the human trafficking and murdered and missing goes. So when we talk about generational trauma, this is how far back and even further, even further. So on the coast, Columbus, and, and so on and so forth. So we've had these <laughs> interactions. The Vikings came before Columbus, and some of them weren't so good. So we've had a lot of this, this trauma go on. It isn't anything new to us, but it always is coming in a new way, new form. We have to keep updated, new tacts, um, and they always are pre preying upon the vulnerable. It seems like that's who they go after. If we can hit the slide there. This is from the 1950s, and I've seen these all over United States and Canada throughout the years, somewhere for cents, um, that they would sell children. So you can see, again, this is even up to recently. And this is, this is government. This is government. This is religion. This is churches. This is Christianity. So all the different sources where sometimes people think maybe you could go get help at the church or things like that, or the government is going to help you. This is what is instilled. This is what we understand. And again, this is programming of society, of dehumanization of our people. When they're not human to people, when somebody's not human, and you don't feel as bad. It might be a camaraderie, even a joke. So again, it makes us vulnerable. So here's some of the sharing points today. What is human trafficking and or murder missing? Um, I'm going to try to zip through a lot of this so we can really have more discussion time and get into the meat of other things. Like uh, Steve Steiny said, you're very welcome to the slides. 
and the resources, I put them in there to, to help you help others and uh, help get your gears going and go, oh, if this is out there, what else is? And so you can find what you're looking for. I kind of, I put so much in there and they're mixed up. They're not organized. So <laughs> sorry about that. So you'll go from documentaries to statistics to studies and things like that, um, which maybe is a good thing. Cultural ways um, sees to the holistic needs. So this really in the nutshell of any kind of therapeutic approach, keep in mind, keep in heart, keep in spirit, understand we really worked as a community. Um, and today we, we don't really have that in a lot of our communities, you know, because of, again, you know, what's gone on. They're, we're torn apart, not all communities, but too many are. So to put that back on the community, it might not be a possibility for those you're serving, um, but to try to find a way then to help them find, or how, try to help them to find a way um, that they can get that whole need. So mind, body, and spirit, checking in with others, how to apply this here and there. And we'll get into that later. Dealing with the barriers that often come. And these, again, um, could be what people call triggering subjects and topics. But if we're not willing to speak it and say the truth, we're doing a disservice to those who are going through it. And then how are they going to feel like they can relate to you and open up to you? Because you'll see in some of those resources, even recently over in Duluth, Minnesota, um, talking about the system failing them over in Ontario, the system failing them. I know United States kind of, but we have J Treaty, doesn't like to recognize um, that this border shouldn't exist. And we have these issues on both sides. We're all suffering the same thing. So there have some wonderful resources in Canada. They really feel like they're desperate up there. And my family, that's where my Anishinaabe comes from is Canada, but my homelands is here too. And so as creator said, um, but they're the ones that seem to be speaking out and sharing some of their stories of overcoming and taking their life back. And I'm not finding much of that in the United States. So I did put some of those resources in there as well. Miigwech to those there who are, who've been sharing and doing that work. Dealing with the um, barriers that often come, it really is sometimes the system feeling being re-victimized at a safe house um, and things like that. And we'll get into a little bit of that later. So how you can advocate, what you can do to support if they're about to go into and things like that. Healing and preparing for life after and life Life after needs. Um, it's hard to say to somebody going through that or even think about life after, but there comes a point in time and everybody's point in time is different. And we'll get into that a little bit later as to and then your resources. If we can flip to the next slide. So today is May 1st, uh, Missing and Murdered um, Awareness Day, um, men, women and children, elders as well. And so here is some information on that. So more resources for you. There's also a news clip that gives a shout out to Minnesota. Uh, Minnesota, the, they're using a lot of the work that they did in Minnesota, those um, that, that were all in the background there. Um, and I know I'd like to give a shout out to Christine Stark. She was um, doing a lot of work in this over in Minnesota for years. And it was groundbreaking at the time. So of course she, she, she got the backlash for it. But those in Minnesota that did all this wonderful work um, because of it, the federal government's adapting a lot of what they did. And so I want to give that shout out to them and say miigwetch because we all know in Indian country when you're doing that groundbreaking work, there's backlash. So miigwetch to you. Next to the next slide there. So this is just the breakdown. I'm, I'm sure you guys as well know, if not, you have it, um, the definition of human traffic and then also the definition of murdered and missing. The sources I got them from, so you can get out, get on there and read a little bit more or quite a bit more. Um, and then they also offer resources. These would be federal governments and that, um, that it's coming from. This is also the reason why I put this there because I don't think that you're you're ignorant to what it is <laughs> or you wouldn't be here ready to serve. But it is because 
oftentimes in the system, if you don't fall under these exact definitions, there's a legal loophole. So there may be injustice. They may not qualify for this service. They may not be able to take them to court, um, things like that. So again, how to help them, um, because you know you were a victim or your loved one was, but then you don't qualify somehow. And that can be what often feels infuriating, but it isn't what you're feeling. You know, it's infuriating is the last thing. Anger is the last thing. It's a first shield that comes up because it helps your legs stand when something like that, that kind of news actually takes your legs out from under you. Why is your legs out from under you? That is the weight of hopelessness. That is the weight of shock. That is the weight of hurt. That is the weight of feeling dehumanized that it, it, what you went through is, you know, being made as it was nothing and it wasn't what it was and all the things that can put you through. So your mind's protecting you, your body's protecting you, and it's putting you in a mode ready to go, ready to stand. And so how we can feel. And again, this may be, oh, go ahead, Steve, talk. You're right on it. <laughs> this may be a lot to take in. So again, um, as in everything in life, try to keep your mind and heart as we go forward. Um, we're all here because we want to help. At least that's what I would like to believe. Um, and not because we've been led here or because uh, in a way that something happened to us and it's altering our life, but because we want to help. We're, we're being guided and maybe it's for a time it doesn't mean it's for the rest of your life don't feel obligated our gifts are meant to grow and, and change and flourish and and what we leave behind is wonderful and what we can share then later is good um, we have to have a daily habit of taking care of ourselves. you got to eat your medicine you got to live that truth that you're going to be presenting forward to those going through it or that went through it um so doing that and i will share that later a little bit more um if you can find somebody that you can confide in um that can handle hearing some of the things that you need to share, but without breaking confidence or too many details that maybe they can figure out who it is, you need to find that confident. Um, sometimes you need to talk about these things and hear yourself say it, catch yourself in it. Um, but taking time for self, you know, the saying you can't fill another cup from an empty cup and it's correct. So take care of yourself, but you're living by example. You're living by example, and we're to be strong. This is what our warriors, our medicine people, our elders, our spiritual people had to do at times. You just had to be strong. I remember when I went on our migration journey, one of the times I saw over in the New Brunswick area by the St. Lawrence Seaway, a time when the and were so close to us, but because of the French and English war, we split. And we took, ended up being pinned against different sides. And the women, some were crying and so heavy with heart as they were carrying on, even some of the men. And there was some men that spoke up and said, no more tears now. We have to, there ha it comes to the point where we leave those tears behind. It is enough now. We, we're, we, we walk forward in our life. So the next slide, Steve. So here's some of the forms of human trafficking, um, and this is just some of them. And like I said earlier, it is constantly evolving. Everything is, they're finding new ways, right? But the forced labor, and, um, and this isn't just the human trafficking, this is also murdered and missing. Um, traf trafficking for forced um, criminal activities, trafficking um, in women for sexual exploitation. Uh, they also do this with the children, with the men. So trafficking for the removal of organs and people smuggling. I also added the resource to that where that came from. So you can get a little bit more into that um, and the resources that they have to offer. There is also, um, like Doc Foster brought up yesterday in a meeting, uh, the gang issue and Indian country is suffering from that where they're trafficking due to the gang problems. Um, so we have a lot of that going on. There's, you know, and again, this is where it can be what they call triggering because of political, but there is some politics in it. 
And so where the distrust would be as to where a victim can go to because they know who is behind it. Years ago, when um, I was up in the Duluth area, there was a guy I called my token Frenchy friend because he was the only French guy I knew. And he was a retired deputy sheriff, Vietnam vet. He was the head of his platoon and the last one alive. He got Agent Orange and all that. He still is and he's living in Minnesota now. He's in his 80s. His name's Robert Menard. I have to give him credit. And that old man said, I want to go up and help in Duluth, but I'm just a white guy. And I said, oh, gosh, Menard, come on, let's go. And so he went up there and then I couldn't make it one time. And um, he went up there anyway, and they had the news cameras there. And he stood up with all of his background and spoke. And he spoke upon, uh, and I, I'm, I'm going to misquote him, but I'm going to get you the gist of it here because this was years ago. But he spoke upon, um, here's the issue. In any kind of community where they have maybe a house or a building that they're, they're, they're running um, women, children, men through um, for human trafficking, you're going to have somebody in that neighborhood who is noticing and speaking. They are calling either their, their congressmen, they're calling the police, they're calling the sheriff's department, they're calling their aldermen, they're calling, depending, it, what if it's the old grandma, she's going to call her alderman, she's going to call the police, and they're going to report it. He said, sometimes the jealous girlfriend that lives down the road is worried her boyfriend's going over there, she's calling them. But there's always somebody of some interest that's calling and calling strongly because of their background and and so then the call goes and goes in this building keeps or house that this is running through keeps happening why does this keep happening well then there's some sort of involvement because at this juncture police should have showed up under suspicion they should have surveyed it they should have done some drive-bys at that point why didn't they so he said that, that is going to let you know that there might be a mayor, there might be law enforcement involvement. It doesn't mean they personally, it could mean their nephew. It could mean that there's a gang bullying them, you know, and, and so you just don't know the situation, but to know that there's something should have been done. And those victims know that. Those victims have that rubbed in their face, letting them know how insecure they should be. So because of that, um, you know, would they be able or be more willing or amped to go forward or should they go forward to somewhere out of their county, out of their area? And how do they know they can trust them? And this is where a lot of your thorough documenting is might help the situation down the line as well. Can we pop onto the next slide? So this here is um, some images from northern Wisconsin, but this is all over the United States and Canada. This actually was from the late 60s, but I first handedly know that many of these folks are still alive. The point is um, the dehumanization. And this is also some of the contributing factors to our murdered and missing and human trafficking. Our people get shot at every day here in northern Wisconsin. You can look up the news article. And through the court system, they get charged about a $300 fine. That's it. Misdemeanor at that and allowed to keep their firearm. And this is when we're spearfishing, hunting, fishing, gathering, harvesting. <clears throat> this also happens with the pipelines, the oil fields, the logging camps, the mining. And so be between all of those kind of things, this is where a lot of our people are trafficked, but also beaten left to death. And also within the system in incarceration, we have so many of our people die in the jails. Um, they're, they're oftentimes beaten by police and not given medical attention. They're have, having health problems and put in a holding cell and left in there. And they die from heart attack, drug overdose, um, withdrawals, things like that, things that didn't need to happen. Uh, in the foster care system, again, as we began and we're looking at the history of, we have residential schools, we have orphanages, the orphanage trains. So it goes all the way back in the system. And as you've seen that one from the 1950s, it's a form of foster care and adoption. So within the system as well. So I know that's politically hard to say. A lot of people don't like to hear that. It might rub some people wrong, but when we're working with victims, we need to hear who hurt them and why they can't trust certain areas and how we can help them through. Because if you know they can trust that one, is it because are you not native and you have a good relation, but it's different for a native um, or a black or a Mexican or an Asian. Um, 
so how to find out and how to really help them through abuse, domestic violence. Um, we have the highest rates. Uh, the rates say that it is a um, non-native um, significant other, but we also have it at home. So this is where empowerment can happen. You know, it's such a helpless situation when the world around you and all of this is going on. Um, what can we do about these races? What can we do about that system? But what can we do at home then? Where do we have power? How can we work on our communities? So the stuff that goes on at home <clears throat> from the generational trauma and generational dysfunctions, how can we change that? Um, and so oftentimes we have this going on as well. And like I said earlier, Doc Foster reminded me of the gang issue. It's huge. And, and that's going on. So that's a part of it. Some of it is at home. Often um, we had this coming in from the outside. It really did. And I remember the stories of when the gangs were originating on the reserves. It came in from the outside. Homelessness, poverty, desperation, basically being vulnerable. Predators, like I said, prey upon that. Um, so if we can hop to the next slide. Help is happening and healing can begin. So to try to remind yourself of this as you're going through, um, as you're hearing their story, this is in the past. It still may be in the present to them, especially if they're having nightmares about it, if it's impacting their life, um, things like that. Their system is responding to the chemicals as those emotional attachments and spiritual attachments are still present. Um, but to try to remember the truth. I mean, there's truth and then, you know, and there's facts. You know, and the facts are, yes, they're suffering. Yes, it's horrible. <laughs> but um, to remember that the, the, the truth here is you're helping them now. And, and, and the healing is beginning. Keep your focus on that. And he, that is the most wonderful, powerful truth at that moment. They're there. And you got them for that moment. They may shut down for a while. They may fall back into things. They may fall away. But you are able to plant these seeds to help them. And this is wonderful. And what doesn't resonate with some, they're still going to tell or they're not ready for yet. They're going to regurgitate that when they get home to a, to a relative, to a friend. And it's going to spread some kind of way and help someone. So try to remember that. And also, you're not going to have the magic words. Once in a blue moon, yes. <laughs> but you're not. Don't expect that of yourself. Um, just, just don't. It's okay. It really is okay. What you're doing is okay. Try not to react um, and things like that. Um, and we hop onto the next slide. Like I said, you guys are welcome to it, but we've got to be able to get through these. I want to have time to open up. Um, where thoughts and feelings go is uh, important. And, um, but because it tells us things and not to get sucked in. So, oh, Doc Foster, did you want to jump on? Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, remember in knowing wholly about so what goes on what we can do what needs to be um, all of these kind of things this is our cultural ways um, that I've always kind of caught the gist of um, what helps through this for victims and their loved ones so see as a parent in need why isn't someone you know that's what they're going to be thinking why isn't someone doing this why isn't someone speaking up why isn't the system that um um, see as a victim at the point of wishing or wondering. So the, when you have victims who are being detained and they're not released, uh, they don't know if they're going to live or die. Uh, many of them are wondering and wishing and praying and hoping, you know, the men in the community will find them. They'll be proactive. The warrior society will come together. Maybe they'll do something. Why didn't they figure out this, you know? And so all these thoughts are going through their head. And that's a lot of what they're going to need work on as well then later if they come out um, because that feels like betrayal it feels like my people didn't care they were just out wearing a red dress getting a selfie but meanwhile how come they didn't realize that me and that one and that one and that one all got taken from the same place you know and so they're upset they're angry they're hurt and they don't want to go back by their people then or won't confide in them because they feel like they're betrayed by them but at the same time the non-native community did what 
where do they go? And so you have, you know, overdose, you have suicide, you have depression, you have them turning inside on themselves. Um, so just think about, think about their position, think about what they're going through um, and think about the kind of needs they would need there. So when we think about things, we don't attach to the emotions of that. So when um, uh, you're spiritually gifted or a dreamer or something like that, and you're shown something, of another person or their life or their moment we don't attach to the emotions of that we just are an observer and in that observation you can find and see what the needs were the lessons where things went wrong and you also get the message so this is what i'm asking you to do is to look at this as an observer not to attach to the emotions of what they went through don't get sucked into that that is a trap so <laughs> that's the gist of i think this slide you guys again we're gonna keep pushing through um here i really like this image how paper beats rock i just we got to have some humor um but it's also the truth <laughs> and so and it's going back to nature this is our ways our teachers are all around us their grandfather is how old and came from where with what wisdoms you know, and that tree is interconnected to what and that breath of life. So how many different teachings in one is that image um, and what came through it? So there's humor and there's beauty and there's so much in that. But so many of the things that they may be feeling, like I spoke earlier, anger is usually our first and form foremost feeling. Um, and it isn't a good service. It really isn't a good service. Um, I share this story often about the beginning of Black Lives Matters and this um, this little black grandma that I, I could hear over my earbuds. I was in the gym and I hear this voice break through saying, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? And I pop up my earbuds thinking, what is going on? And she's sucking me into a conversation between her and this white lady. And they're talking about Black Lives Matter. And oh my goodness, that I don't know what that white lady said, but she opened up a can of worms. And that black lady looked at me and said, I'm angry. And I said, what, honey? And then she cued me in. Oh, I said, yes, I do. Yes, I do know what you mean. I've been through that, my children. And I said, but the thing is, I said, this is what I learned because I used to be angry too. Oh, I was a scrapper. I was ready to go and I had to. It served me well. My tears would have done no good when I had to speak up to who I had to speak up to at times. But the thing is, when you're angry, that's the last thing you're really feeling. I felt overwhelmed. I felt hurt. I felt devastated. I, I was in shock. I, I, I so many feelings that my heart felt, but anger was the last thing I felt and would have truly felt. These are the things I really felt. And when we disengage from what we're really feeling, we lose touch with our own heart's truth. And this is why it's important to know what you're really feeling. But go ahead and wait till you're ready to work through it or you have the support to work through it because there are some hard things to work through. Doc Foster, you want to jump on there? I see you're unmuted. Yes, I, I thank you, Teresa. And something I want to mention to people, and this is not to confuse anybody, but our, our view of the universe has to do with balance and energy and regaining balance. And I'm not trying to get all, all uh, new age on you, but, but essentially that's what we are is just energy and even matter is just energy that that was uh, einstein's remarkable theory of relativity that energy equals mass times a, a constant squared and which he modified it slightly but and if you just compromise the most common element in the universe is the hydrogen atom which was discovered by a woman who couldn't get a job at a university because she was a female in the 1920s and 30s and so she came from Oxford over to Harvard where she could at least become a lecturer. They never even made her a professor, but she found out that the, the, most, the most common element in the universe is hydrogen, the hydrogen atom. And it's, it's a remarkable little atom. And in its most common form, all it has is a proton and an electron, that's it. Now, if you compromise even a hydrogen atom, we're not talking uranium now, we're not talking, which is a, a huge, very complex atom, uh, just one single hydrogen atom. You can look at the history of Nagasaki and Hiroshima and see what we did with that one compromising, just the energy of one little atom, 
which is mostly just space connected by energy. I bring this up because in, in, the, in our Western society, we pathologize things and we look for vulnerabilities and risk. And, and we treated PTSD as if it's something static. It isn't. We didn't even have that term until 77, 78, when the VA brought it in and we started using the terms post-traumatic stress disorder. And so I want to present a, another view of PTSD because the only reason you and I are talking with each other is because our ancestors with PTSD survived. They say that culture really began when we began agriculture, but I suspect it began when we domesticated the dog, when the wolf became a friend so we could sleep at night. Until we could sleep at night, only the people that awakened at every noise, the people that awakened at every sound, at every smell, those are the people that survive. So what we call PTSD is a remarkable genetic capacity we have to trigger and to respond to threat, threat to life. And I, I go back again, if we went 40,000 years ago and we looked at the dire wolf or we looked at the saber-toothed tiger or the cave bears in Europe, who would have ever guessed that this relatively hairless two-legged being who was competing for caves, who was competing for with, with mammoths and mastodons for, for food and for, for area and territory, who would have ever guessed that we would survive? And part of the reason we survived is because of what we call PTSD. And we found that it's much more dynamic than what we used to believe. And while I don't know about cure, I don't even know if it's a condition we want to cure, uh, there's a lot of healing and we can offer so much healing. Thank you, Teresa, for letting me share just a little bit of a shift of the perspective. So I don't see PTSD as a death now. I see it as part of our safety. And I don't see all of our emotions and stuff, but we are still a mammal. And sometimes we think we're a god, and, and but we're, we're a mammal. And as mammals, we are at times reduced to limbic, to our limbic area of our thinking, which is uh, anger is what happens when we're hurt or afraid. Anger is actually a secondary emotion. Thanks, Teresa. Thanks, folks, for listening. Miigwech, Doc Foster. So the, here's some of the stages. No matter the stage, again, you have to self-care. Um, and so there's the immediate or imminent. You just got news um, of a loved one missing or murdered um, or been trafficked or went into trafficking um, or that they're still in it um, or just got out if it's somebody in trafficking um, <clears throat> or some time had passed. This is important in country. Most um, tribes I know, including mine, um, there's the year marker. A year is 13 moon cycles. Um, and so after a year, um, you know, it, they talk about leaving that spirit go. But I, for us, even the four days, you know, give them that time to cross over. But I've learned it's in the context uh, that's how you're pulling on that spirit. So that loved one that's passed. Um, if you're sitting there and they've been gone and you're still crying, you're still, you're, you're beating yourself up, you're drinking yourself away, you're neglecting your kids, you're, ne you know, neglecting your dreams, your aspirations. What will that do to that spirit watching you go down like that? And is that good for them? They need to journey on and you'll be with them in time. And it's such a hard, hard thing to, but in cases where it's a normal passing, and they journey on, they get to come back for a visit. And so to allow that journey on, you'll still get your visits with them. But we have to get ourselves in that way to remember what if um, it, many years have passed or things like they're just now opening up. So it's new to them. It's fresh because they're just now opening up. So that there's that differential. Everything's not black and white. Um, and again, um, remind them to treat themselves and their loved ones as they would if it was somebody else they knew going through it. Give themselves that same care, that same love, that same attention. <laughs> On to the next slide, uh, Steve. <clears throat> Let me go So again, this, this little bit here, trauma survivors often need as much information as possible. You do, you, you really do. You, especially when we're talking about an unjust system and a history of that, 
you really feel powerless. And, um, and I think in any situation we should, right? You're just going in for a normal surgery. You're going in to get a, your teeth cleaned. Aren't they giving you all the information as possible? You're going to go, you know, sign a legal document. So um, especially in this situation, um, give them as much information, but also about options, about catching themselves. And we'll get into that with some of the other slides here if I talk a little faster or something. <laughs> so, and then the needing of control. So what is real control? What is healthy control? What is, we're, we're, we can take it to the wrong end. We're, you know, say something happened to your sibling growing up. Now you're a parent and maybe you're going to be overbearing on your children because you fear to death of something happening like that to them. Um, so um, what to do? And so the justice and the self-care, what they can do kind of list. Um, what comes with choices. So looking down the various paths. We learned this through our stories, the oral tradition. We would look down the paths. We look at our history. We look at the lessons. So uh, another thing and is to do that. And, and I know that is a, a form of a therapy approach that we'll look at later as well. And I have in there a slide. So this is part of our culture. Trauma responses can often create more issues um so you know compound complex relationship issues uh, marriages abuse at home addiction and things like that so again help them to learn their choices safely by letting them know you know sometimes these things can happen let's catch ourselves in it before we have more problems um and so again it's a form of control but healthy control in their choices and in their path and recognize it because as doc foster said we are human and we are going to feel some things and we are going to react and and that's natural and it's okay but we don't stay there that's the problem so let's move up out of it and let's try to do our best and when we can do better let's do better and we may fall back at times and that's okay too so we'll hop on to the next slide Teresa yep I'm going to just say a word about what what we're using that word control but truly um safety is what it's about and so for people to feel safe the love that I talked about, which is the gravity of our soul, it's what connects us to life. I, I thank each of you for your courage to stay alive. We deal so much with suicide. We deal so much with people who seek to escape uh, the, the lived experience of life, particularly the pain. But one, one thing I like about Indian culture is, is many of our ceremonies and stuff have elements of pain in them. Uh, sweat lodge, sun dance, many uh, fasting, many things can be uncomfortable. You will not live this life without pain. The question is, can we have meaning and purpose and safety as we address pain? Can we have the company of those not born yet, the aspiration of those that are unborn? Can we have the help of those who came before us? Can we have the association of those that are here now? So we do everything we can to create safety. And one more word, remember when Tiger Woods, when everybody, Nike was doing all of its advertisements and everybody, was all the minority, particularly young young children of color, were saying, "I'm Tiger Woods. I'm Tiger Woods. I'm Tiger Woods." Once uh, once Tiger got caught in in the uh, relationship scandal, suddenly nobody was Tiger Woods. But in the Indian community, uh, we say it's awesome to be Ek Chewi Chasha Ek Chewi An. It's awesome to be an authentic, real human being. It's awesome to be a common person. And it is, it's not, not to be someone else, but to be who we are. And that includes the scars and that includes the challenges. And that includes the, 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 the hard times of our heart. Thank you, Teresa. Safety, safety is a way of expressing love. Miigwech, Doc Foster. So this one's about perception and reality. And we know that things like PTSD and victim programming or mentality, things like that, um, unresolved traumas can change our focus. And it's, it's our brains trying to do a wonderful thing for us to recognize an issue or keep us, as Doc Foster said as well, safe. Um, but it can misguide us if we haven't learned or our filters have been destroyed our boundaries we haven't learned healthy boundaries or they have been destroyed so again this is boiling back down to safe and as he just said safety this is the first thing on rebuilding finding self or rebuilding self safe space personal space smells and colors spirituality and looking at does this serve the life i'm, I'm here to live or does this honor my loved one 
So these are things also to maybe remind them, you know, and if you don't um, feel comfortable saying it to them, you're welcome to print this out or change the image, whatever you, you need to do to make this work, but put it out there. So it's there for them to think about. Um, time, uh, take time every day, set it aside to reground self, breathing, smudging, talking with spirit. Some people it's going to the water. Some people it's sitting out in the woods. Um, some people it's singing that song. So some people it's greeting the sunrise. And so to take this time every day um, to do these kind of things, and it's beyond all that. I mean, I'm, these are just a few of the things I'm mentioning that they could be doing that is cultural. Um, finding space with the, the peace with the past so goals dreams aspirations before and since also this is going to help you gauge if their dreams and that before and 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 now since have altered in such a way is it been altered because of what happened to them and is this something they really want to do and then how do we help support them in that if it's something they're they're just you know gonna do but maybe they're maybe they are meant to know but is it for the rest of their life? So to remember that it doesn't have to be that way. Um, doing all one can for oneself nutritionally. Diet is huge and so impacting. It is so important. Can we hop on the next slide? I know time is really cutting it here. Um, so they wanted uh, uh, you guys to have a five minute break because they felt that this might be triggering. And I guess it is a good example of um, taking care of ourselves. So I would, if you could, um, in your own ways, if you're uncomfortable with it, that's fine. Put your feet on the ground where you're at and connect with the earth. Open up your, 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 so connect your mind, your body, your spine, sitting straight up with the universe where we come from, our creation, star nation. Whoa. Shine your light, we are equal. I remember the days when our prayers were illegal. I remember the days when being Indian was lethal. Yeah, we had a rough past, but get ready for the sequel. Get ready for the glorious comeback of our people. Oh, yeah. Rise up, all you warriors of love. All you answers to the prayers of our ancestors from above. I can feel it in my heart. Can you feel it in your blood? I can hear the seven fire calling us to wake up, wake All up. All nations rise, rise up cause now's your time. We don't have to hide anymore cause now's the time. All nations rise. Rise up, cause now's your time. We don't have to hide anymore, cause now's the time. With forgiveness as my bow and my prayers as my arrows, pull them back and let go. I watch them fly like sparrows, have hope. Yeah, I have hope With compassion as my shield and faith Down to my marrow I will walk the pollen path Even when it gets narrow Yeah, yeah, I Resurrect Yes, you can bet That we seen the single mama Raising children on the res We seen domestic violence Tear apart what we have left We seen the alcohol Take it all and leave us dead We seen the children take their lives When they can't take the dread anymore Can't take the dread anymore No, we can't take the dread anymore no, we can't take the dread anymore. It's a war, yeah. it's a war but we've seen it all before. And now we know we can change it, cause that's why we were born. We know we are the ones that we have been waiting for. We are the ones Grandma has been praying for. So rise up, all you warriors of love. All you answers to the prayers of our ancestors from above. I can feel it in my heart. Can you feel it in your blood? I can hear the seven fire calling us to wake up. Wake up. Pueblo hermoso, levántense, es nuestro tiempo. No tienes que esconderte más. Ahora es nuestro tiempo. Mujer indígena, tú eres tan sagrada. 
Traigas medicina de tu suelo todavía. A pesar del abuso de tu cuerpo y tu tierra, respetamos tus ancestros y la suya cultura. Hombre indígena, tú eres honorable y yo veo la fuerza que todavía sobrevive. A pesar del abuso de tu raza venerable, yo respeto tus ritos, tus danzas, tus padres. Somos guerreros del amor y guerreros de la paz, y sí, no vamos a escondernos más. Somos guerreros del amor y guerreros de la paz, y sí, no vamos a escondernos más. They say that history is written by the victors, but how can there be a victor when the war isn't over? The battle has only just begun, and Creator is sending his very best warriors. And this time, it isn't Indians versus cowboys. No, this time, it is all the beautiful races of humanity together on the same side, and we are fighting to replace our fear with love. And this time bullets, arrows, and cannonballs won't save us. The only weapons that are useful in this battle are the weapons of truth, faith, and compassion. you're muted you're muted sorry thank you um i hope that helps you guys ground yourself and refocus on again where this is at where we're at and that we all have a place in this take a breath and reground yourself and we're gonna jump back in um i i can't remember june something i i have the link to it in the in the resources at the bottom to who she is and so it's it's there in the references as well um so you'll be able to click on it and when if you guys ask for the powerpoints for the slides um so some types of therapy and i just grabbed um a lot of the it looked like top ones online people are doing today, but Doc Foster and Steve let me know some of this stuff isn't really used anymore. But I, I hope you get the gist of it. It's a disservice to really summate here culturally what it would look like. Um, but again, I think this is going to help you get a generalized idea of what we utilize and how each individual is unique and important as their development and where they're at in their path, what they're gonna need may change in their tools. Again, um, greeting the sunrise, going to smudge, things like that. Um, diet is important, sound. Um, so song, rattle, drum, um, sitting by the river, putting their feet in the river, ceremony as well going to their elders, going to their spiritual people, their medicine people, going to somebody they can relate with. Sometimes talking to your best friend is your greatest medicine um, and things like that as well. Um, diet is so huge. It's one of the first things they, the government and the soldiers took away from our people. It really impacts mood and thought, hormones. So when you're going through something, this is going to make it worse. It, there's just no, no two ways around it, even though you may have been eating that diet for a long time. Um, so again, as you can see through some of the storytelling is really how the majority of our tribes learned. And so looking at the stories, looking at the options, rewriting your story. This is your story today. Things like knowing, is this my hurt and pain and ugliness or theirs? Why am I carrying this? And so to leave it with them, leave that in the past where it was. Is it happening today? Only in my nightmares, maybe it is. How can we make them safe? First and foremost, that's what our warriors, our people, our elders would seek to do. Um, and so... This is what we do to take care of these kind of things. Um, and that's just some of it, just some of it. When your stomach is upset, when you have been going through a lot of fight or flight chemicals, um, your nerves are racked, the worry, um, the anger, it hurts the stomach, it hurts the intestines, it hurts the liver. Oftentimes, I can't speak for all tribes, but we would make things like a, a, a mild, like a white fish soup um and or uh like a deer deer meat with the bone in the broth soup and these things really um 
are healing for the stomach and the system, but it also can promote an appetite afterwards. So they're able to eat and then it be able to be absorbed and be calming. Um, so, you know, if you, you're upset and you eat, it can upset an already upset system and create an ulcer. Um, I was asked to um, remind that there is chronic wasting disease in the deer. Our people in Indian country up north in the north woods are, are very aware of that. But if you don't know, just make sure it's a healthy deer if you are going to get this um, and create this meal. Um, start with the broth is what we would do. So again, we use food as medicine. Um, and here's some more slides on things like that um, to look at and suggest um, um, and, and inquire what are they eating, what are they doing, um, what would a liver repair diet look like for them, what do they have access to, what is their budget, what kind of resources are out there to help them do this. They're dental, they may need dental and you know vanity is not something we support but if dental can be painful, dental can be confidence, dental can be getting away from the memory of what happened to them and not seeing it in the mirror still. Dental is health as well. It can create heart disease and digestion of food. And so they may need dental because um, they're punched sometimes. They are drugged sometimes. Um, and so in other things as well. So they may need dental. And so talk about that and carefully. I mean, you don't want to give them a complex say hey did you think about getting your dental done that might not be a nice thing <laughs> what are you saying you know so find a way to work with them but get to know them get to know them and you'll know how to approach it um and then the vitamins or supplements, things like that. Again, if you can find resources out there and what do they need and what are they taking? Um, maybe they're taking a traditional medicine from somebody else. So they need to ask that person who they're taking the traditional medicine from. Don't ask them what they're taking for traditional medicine. We don't share those medicines with people. We have to protect them in that way. But ask them to go to the person giving them that medicine. Is it okay to mix this vitamin or supplement with that medicine? Because some you cannot mix. They don't mix well. Or you just have to space the part. Did you want to say something, Doc Foster? Sure. Thanks, Teresa. Because one of the real important things that Teresa is sharing right now is our holistic approach to life, to balance, to recovery of balance, to restoration of balance. If each of you came to me individually and I just started shoving you right now, other than Lucy Peterson, who, who went to college on a, on a wrestling and, and uh, track and field scholarship, so she'd kick my butt. But each of you would regain your, your balance right away because we're designed to, homeostasis is a principle of, of life, of every cell, certainly of every person. And, and it seems the reductionism that comes with Western society has its value and has its place. So I, I give thanks for that creator, but I also give thanks for our holistic, everything's related, and everything's connected view of the universe and so it's not it's not just the food it's not just the medicine but it's the context and i mentioned to people even my grandmother um used to do dishes <laughs> and, and when i was young we had no electricity don't you love that my kids said what did t-rex look like dad <laughs> anyway uh but she would do the dishes and i'd say uh grandma you don't have to do those she goes no 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 i'm 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 putting in blessings for those that are going to eat from this plate. Well, I have a house full still as an old guy and I do dishes by hand and I do laundry and I fold them by hand. And, and as I fold the laundry, I, I, I give prayers to those that are gonna wear that clothes, underwear, the socks, the shirts, the pants, uh, same with the dishes. And so what I'm talking about is we found that healing is multimodal, multi-sensory. We found that the drumming, the singing, we found that just the atmosphere, the climate, the smell of the sage, the smell of the smudge, of the cedar, of the sweet grass, of the tobacco, uh, we found that all of those things contribute. So I wanted to mention two more, three more things. One was EMDR, which is another approach to um, reducing strength of trauma memories because they're not going to go away. You know, that's that's the awesome thing. There's there's healing, but I don't know about a cure, but I don't know that we want to be cured. We want to trigger when something threatens life itself, when something threatens safety spiritually, emotionally, physically, sexually, 
financially, all the ways that we can be shaded. So I wanted to mention the MDR. I wanted to mention motivational interviewing, which is really an Indian approach. Is we're on a hochokawakam, we're on a circle, a circle of life, a sacred circle of life. There is no beginning, there is no end. There is for us in our finiteness, in our humanity. And the other one I want to mention is is uh, IFS, uh, internal family systems, which we found just a remarkable approach for individuals and families to communicate and to, and there's a book by Richard Schwartz, the developer uh, of, of the best practice of IFS that says no bad parts. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful language and template that we can use for couples, for families, for, for people, period. Uh, and it, it, it has a remarkable um, robustness in whether in Pakistan or, or in uh, Anai Nakota, uh, uh, on the Fort Belknap Reservation or the, uh, the Nakota, uh, Dakota at the Fort Peck Reservation or the Lakota at the Sachangu Oyate, wherever it is. Okay, thank you, Teresa. Miigwech, Doc. Definitely, motivational interviewing is, I, I have been saying that too for years, it is a way that our elders win about things and, and it's in such an in-depth way. It is so great. And the smells, the spirits it brings in and what that awakens you because what is within with, within you. And so now you're attached to that and not this. Some of these groups and, oh, go ahead, Doc. And that is that I want us, one of the things that we do is to seek grants and stuff. We say, oh, we talk about how pitiful we are, how pitiful our people are and stuff. And that's necessary uh, in, in our society in order to get, but, but there is nothing in our culture that cannot have healing. I don't necessarily mean cure, but I mean healing. And so, so we look for ways of healing. And, and there's so many elements and aspects that contribute to and promote healing. And so I don't like to say trauma-informed care or trauma-informed planning. I like to say trauma-healing-informed care, trauma-healing-informed practices. So, so remember that we, we, we are optimists uh, because life is optimistic and the negative is important and it matters. And pain is a marvelously honest teacher, uh, but healing and aspirational hope is, is essential to our ways of, of of seeing the world in our, our aspiration for recovery. Thank you, Teresa. Miigwech, Doc. So if there isn't groups um, for you to do, um, send them to, I hope you could create them in your area. Uh, reach out to other therapists and, and do this as a, a team effort because this isn't something you might wanna take on by yourself. But offer some support groups offers some educational groups as well you'll notice that you know those who got into it in ways they might come from a good home and it's because of what we are bombarded with in our communities on tv on the radio at school the bullying the gangs all these other aspects is coming in from um, the appeal to it the way it's dressed up um, and so to look at that as well, and then I, I would also look at um, sometimes it is due to the generational dysfunction and traumas at home, they haven't developed filters and boundaries and what to do and there are being bombarded again by what all kind of circumstances so to, to offer some educational groups as to how they can empower at home i mean find your own words and allow spirit to move you um, or allow the people to word it for you um, but what it's going to entail and it's going to be things that they're going to need to know and how we can empower ourselves at home as a community and, and bring us back that way. And again, sharpen our sensories that we once had, bring them alive again. And who's the threat and who do we not want around and how to handle things appropriately. Um, so we're not getting in trouble because if you've got warriors willing to step up, let's not get them in trouble. We want to keep them. We want to keep them as mentors and role models. We want them fueling a fire, you know, and things like that. So how can we go about this in a good way? And let's counsel on it because that might look different in different situations and at different communities. Um, so it, I would suggest that if there is some support groups and they allow you in, observe those groups, go in and observe them. 
look at those things like trauma bonding. Um, this has become such a normalization of how we talk and communicate. You know, I got family in Ontario that one, one of the young ones, they noticed, oh, she could do is whine and that's how she talks. You know, everything is this way. And this is how we've learned to talk, right? So to observe and see what's going on in there and also hear the common threads what's what is the common threads that they suffered from are struggling to get over um injustices that they're hitting walls they're hitting barriers they're hitting needs that might actually help them um just go in and listen and see what comes to you beyond what i'm telling you um allow and trust yourself and spirit to move you and who knows what you're going to be bringing next that would really benefit uh, because of what you observed. And so if they'll let you in just to observe, and they may even ask you to help them through it and be a part of it. Who knows how it evolves. Um, can we hop on to the next slide? Um, and again, to remember, you're not your traumas. This is theirs, what they did. Um, it, you had that was a moment in life, a long moment that might carry with you but it's a moment in life and it doesn't have to be your life it doesn't have to define your life it doesn't have to be it really doesn't and it's theirs you had what kind of dreams goals aspirations you were working on what you had what kind of character and personality before this stuff happened um before this happened to you before it happened to your loved one before it happened tirelessly sometimes we have elders who went through residential school or the orphanages and they get out and they suffered what they suffered through there. They witnessed what they witnessed through there and they were raised how not to speak and things like that. When you think about sociological and then they watch their, their children go through what and their spouse maybe is suffering and didn't heal from their own. So they go through this domestic violence, you know, and, and they still, there wasn't resources kind of yet at that time. And they're watching it go on then they are elderly and native and they're going to the hospital or nursing home for what kind of help and get treated how and sometimes are still sexually abused and things like that medical maltreatment so murdered and missing comes in a lot of forms and so for some people it is through different stages of their life they're re-victimized um, and so not to feed false hope to the hopeless i think this is one of the worst things to do to be very real about it but to also remember this is today that was then this happened that was that situation at that part of life i am in this part of life i've been in how many parts of life since for those who been through so much or been re-victimized and so to remember that that is back there this is my life now and take back who you are don't allow that to take that from you when you're ready when you're ready right now you might be sad right now you might be a lot of things um so to remember that here is some stories um, on overcoming human trafficking and some resources um, and um, one from the, the Minnesota areas in there as well. Um, you know, like I had said earlier, uh, some are short, some are a little longer. I, I advise you to watch them and find inspiration out of them, find the lessons and listen to them like with, through child eyes through child eyes, get your child eyes back, eyes of wonder, eyes that doesn't have all that programming, eyes that are just absorbing and learning everything and looking for a solution in a way where they say you can't do it. Listen with your child eyes. Um, and so here's some more. Um, like I said, I, I really threw in a, a, quite a few slides of resources and there's so much more out there. Oh my goodness. So, you know, when you click on some of these, it's gonna pull up other stuff in your streams thumb through them you might find something that pertains a little better to what you're dealing with um and here's what does healing look like for the families of murdered and missing and this is from an article and this comes out of if i remember right ontario um not that that matters they're dealing with the same as we're dealing with here so feel free to reach out um there may not be resources that can be trusted in your area minnesota you guys i know a lot of you are from minnesota here today um and um 
so I know that a lot of the survivors and even in a recent documentary or news thing that's on there in the resources talks about being victimized in the system there in, in different parts of Minnesota. So when seeking help. And so again, you might need to reach out across the nation or reach out in Canada, find what's working, what isn't, what are the threats, what are the potentials, so how you can best advise them to protect themselves um, and also look for are they going through that. They may not want to tell, they may not want to be a victim again. Again. So they may keep coming to counseling, but just got molested over at the safe house and, you know, or something like that, or offered money for sex at the safe house. And they're not going to tell you because they're tired of being a victim. And so, you know, if they don't want to talk about it, that's fine. But then you can at least give them the tools for healing and going through that self-care and getting out. And here's some other options. And I heard some people or whatever, how you want to play it, how spirit moves you. These are just resources from here on out for you to take home with you. This is for social workers. We do need to network. It's so important and it'll be a part of it. Um, but again, safety first is my, my big thing, always safety first um, in a case of an emergency, you know, um, and at what juncture are they coming to you? You know, some of the stuff could be so traumatizing, you know, where they could go. Are you bound by your sessions times up kind of moment because if they just dumped a lot can you really ethically leave them to go like that what can you offer them what can you do so try to think of a backup plan in situations like that and what you can do um and and even talk to them about that maybe you won't be able to but you have a colleague there that um has this where you guys set up a safety net where okay they, they would jump in and start talking to them or could take on your other client that's up next um and so make them aware of that are they open to that um because i really hate to see you go like this oh my goodness what you just shared and this is important and thank you for sharing or whatever comes that needs to be said in that dynamic or that relationship you've dealt with them um and seeing them we can pop through some of these slides if you want so they can see what's there but otherwise let's just open it up if doc foster has anything to share first um and this is working with law enforcement. Again, you may have to, as a mandatory reporter, taking notes, you're going to want to know. And here they do have the gang retaliation and stuff like that that can happen. Um, so always safety, safety, safety. But you're going to want to look at detailed stuff um, and remember mental blocks. The mind is amazing and it does that to protect us. Um, and in more diagnoses kind of stink sometimes they're not going to want to come back some of them for that. Um, but you know so how to work through it or let them know this isn't permanent this is just your mind protecting you right now. And so we can work through this, and you know things like that as well. Um, it's really important to help them to know that that, that, that doesn't have to be a permanent diagnosis. Um, so here's some references at the very end here, the references, there's the June one, all nations rise in the link. Um, so, but like you saw before, there's also just a ton more resources for you as well with stories. Um, I have Christine Stark, a, a few, just a few resources of some of her work in there. And that is a lot of the Minnesota stuff. Um, that she has documented and spoken up on. Um, so there you go. I'd like to open up the floor to any questions. There was a lady in here. I want to see her name. I'm so bad with names. and sorry, you guys and gals. Maria, I want to see was her name. And she had said she worked over in BC, Canada for a long time on this. And um, she would be willing to share. I don't know if she has the mic or not, but I wanted to hear from her. Well, whatever compels her to speak on. But if she noticed a threat of things that really help them to persevere, overcome and take their life back that is going to be the ultimate goal right always we want to see that for each other why don't we expect that for ourselves and um and then also hardships and barriers whatever it compels her to speak on and share if she could make which thank you Teresa. um i'm overwhelmed with all this sharing um i uh, i'm working right now in the, in the arctic region but i work down south in, in vancouver area for a long time 
and I had the chance, as, as you mentioned, to work with survivors or families of a murder missing women, native women. Um, it's, it's really true, which is Dr. Dr. Foster said, and I'm sorry, I'm mumbling because like I said, I'm, I'm overwhelmed. Um, it's healing, it's not cure, it's healing. And um, maybe to be there with this, the witnessing um, their healing, supporting, encouraging, um, to celebrate their identity, um, to listen with respect on the wisdom they have from their experiences and use traditional tools for healing ceremonies with water. Um, I had the privilege to, to be part of those ones. <laughs> Thank you for giving me this, this minutes to share. Thank you. Thank you. So if anybody has any questions or wants to contribute, we'd have a couple more minutes left. I'm sorry, we pushed it all the way to the end here. Um, and I want to thank you guys all and gals for listening. I Lisa, really appreciate that. Yes. I am doing the embarrassing thing to my daughter. And so I've never done this to her before. Omosh Dewi, so show yourself on the camera, my girl. But I bring her up because she's uh, her her intention is to move forward in um, presenting MMIW and other things via story, via the narrative that's captured on video and stuff. And, and so she's majoring in that type of stuff at University of Montana. But two of her, her older colleagues, Ivan and Ivy McDonald, their brothers and sisters, they've done some marvelous uh, film work already on MMIW. And she works with them at All Nations uh, Healing Center here in Missoula. So. I want to introduce you to Oma Stewi. So sorry to embarrass you, my girl. And, and I've never done this before. And maybe I won't again, but, but I'm so proud of her because she's dealt with so much with body shaming and being a brown girl in, in a white community and, and being a girl in a male sport and all this stuff. And I'm so proud of the woman she is and the woman she's become. And she's been very active. In fact, this evening, she's putting on two things al along with, with other students. And she's done some wonderful art there on the campus and stuff too on the sidewalk, uh, uh, talking about healing of the earth and healing of our people, because we all are injured when we abuse the earth or the water or the air or the fire or one another. We're all injured, the one hurting us, the ones witnessing it, and the one that we identify as victim. But victims no longer. We're, we're, we're human beings, and, and we do recover. Cure, I don't know, but heal, you bet. Thank you. Thank you, Mashte. I hope I didn't embarrass you. Um, hello. I just kind of wanted to speak. Um, yes, um, I'm kind of nervous right now. My dad just put me on spot, but I recently just finished a mural on campus representing like the indigenous perspective of how we view the earth, you know, like how we see her as our mother and how we nurture her, nurture her through like our prayer and through our like our our spiritual offerings and etc but I guess as an indigenous college student I kind of wanted to ask like how can I be a better advocate for um for things like this because I just recently had a friend um go through something similar and I just don't know how to like respond to it one she's not she's not native so um, two, she is a woman, and I just, like, here, here at a college campus, they offer, like, one, like, a resource that they can go to, like, anonymously, but it's not necessarily, like, it's not support that they need, and I'm wanting to bring support to our campus through, like, talk through, like, groups, we recently just lost a native artist to suicide here on our campus and hasn't been recognized for his work, um, which is truly a struggle as a media artist myself it, because he's done so much work for this campus. And yet the only memorial, memorial he has is set up in the art building. And 
I I just want to learn all that I can to help build that narrative through my my media and like start bringing light and conversation to our campus about the struggles of indigenous peoples you know hopefully hopefully go ahead hun whoops um i think that's just kind of like where i'm gonna stop like i don't I have, that just kind of like my my um, questions i'm sorry i'm kind of nervous we're at the end of time honey Make oh, which for okay. sharing I, and your question is important and it's horrible we're at the end of time I can text your mm -hmm. dad if you want um mm -hmm. but I think even getting those questions out there knowing that that's a need an issue and a wonder is so important and finding those questions is really important you know finding what are we wondering what can we do is so important so make which because that means that we want to do, we just don't know where to start or begin, or mm -hmm. we have these barriers or these fears and, you know, and so we need to start that dialogue. That's huge. That's huge. Me which. Thank you so Thank you. much, uh, everyone. Uh, do we have someone else commenting? Thank you so much, everyone. I know we're we're just past the top of the hour. We want to honor everyone's schedules. I want to thank, uh, sincerely thank uh, Teresa for the time and effort uh, that she put into this and the sharing today. And uh, Dr. Foster, of course, uh, I your spirit touches me uh, all the time. And wonderful to meet your your daughter. I. I've only heard legends of your wrestling prowess, but not of your artistic ability. So I would love to see some of your art and want to consider getting you connected with a couple of our departments that feature youth initiatives and especially uh, the, the youth native voice. Um, you have yes. a place at the table uh, with us, my friends. So. Yes. Thank you so much, Donna and Steve and Teresa. Thank you all that contributed and all that were here. Bless you. Don't tell. Mataku ye yasu. We're all related. Have a good day. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thanks again, Donna, for collaborating with us on this wonderful series. And uh, our paths will cross again. I'm certain of it. So thank you, everyone. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay connected. <laughs>